So yeah, uh, API economy. So I was one of the co-authors of the API economy 101 book. And uh, what we did was that we wrote the basics there and, and we wrote it from a Finnish perspective, but also kind of a global perspective. And what we did was put some pra practical examples from, well, from 20 years of, of APIs uh, with scientific research because that was the one thing that we didn't see uh, a lot done. So there were all these kind of industry reports and, and product uh, sale, sales materials, but no real research on APIs or popularized research. So my name is Mari Panina and I'm from Osanga, as, as Mehdi just said. And one of the things I do is I'm local organizer of API Days Helsinki. We just did a June, kind of the first online API days trial run and it was well uh, well received so we're doing uh, a bigger one in September and I also train and consult a lot of companies and public sector organizations and I can be called the mother of an API cycles method that is a lean and open method for API development and, and specifically business oriented API development so you can reach me with LinkedIn and Twitter and all kinds of other places, but here uh, let's kind of continue where the previous speaker led us. So about the ecosystems and customer journeys. So I usually use this picture to kind of show uh, the point of where we should really start in looking at what is it that our company, our organization is actually uh, providing us APIs. So that's the one thing. You need to make a strategic choice as to what you're offering, what your customers, what your partnerships will be. Early on, I was working in a big retail company, and that was one of the things that we were kind of missing a direction because there was no partner strategy. There was some internal API development, internal digital development, but there was no partner stra uh, strategy. So we really didn't know who to partner with or who to provide our APIs. Well, we ended up doing a, a, an e-commerce solution for three countries and we basically did this. Well, not the ordering which was at that time, it was a few years back, but we, we looked at who are we serving who have already these APIs, these capabilities that we need, and where can we still buy, borrow, you know, build them? And the thing about ecosystems is that it's often misunderstood. So it's about kind of this uh, generating value together to the ecosystem and customers. And this is where I think there's a, there's a good research we quoted in the API Economy 101 book too, where there's a correlation between the global startup index and the emergence of APIs uh, globally. So there are areas like, you know, the Silicon Valley, Paris, London areas, which were already early on, both in the startup scene and in the API scene. And there's there are reasons for that, that were researched for example, culture and marketers and developers together. So now this begs the question of what is API economy? If we are talking about it, we should define it. What we found out in, in the book, we originally wrote it in Finnish in 2018, and then it was translated in 2019. You can buy it in all kinds of Amazons and Googles and whatnot. So what we found out was that there was no proper definition one definition for API economy. So we had to make one up and we uh, pondered on it and we came to these conclusions that, okay, utilizes resources efficiently. That's one important thing for a company. Quick creation of added value uh, and you can use data and other resources provided by other organizations. So basically being quicker, being faster to adapt to changes and then understanding that there are these new customers. So there are these developers, as previous speakers well addressed, but there's also this thing that actually we forget sometimes. I was, I was just working with the Finnish government on a kind of a travel related data hub project and we had to do legal design to make community guidelines for that platform. 
And we were told that there are only these developers that will use the APIs. I was like, well, maybe. Is it really true? And then we found out that actually the developers developing the platform had already kind of made some other decisions because of the SPA technology that was used to build the whole thing, that actually every user was able to access the API and activate the API and connect it to whatever, you know, Zapier or other platform or their website or something else. And that was a very good thing, but that was kind of a hidden uh, gem in the plans. So then what are the API economy business models? Well, there has been a lot of talk about th that already today, but I want to take another perspective to it. So actually what we should be talking about is that what are the specific industry business models? What are the specific technology business models and indirect and direct business models? And of course, there is also kind of what are the more operational centric uh, kind of focuses on, on business models and what are the kind of revenue centric or customer centric. But basically, there are a lot of misconceptions that I see in my line of work with, with customers um, that it's very easy to kind of go to a totally wrong direction. So you can go to kind of assumption that you need to build an API strategy while you actually need to build a business strategy that kind of includes APIs. So it's not just, you know, add water or just add APIs and then it's like an instant thing uh, or something. So it's really about enabling your business strategy with the use of APIs or even vice versa. And you need to take the APIs and related technologies and legislation and ecosystems and network effect and all that you know, web 2.0, 3.0 business model stuff into account. And, and it's like, it's not guesswork. This is a very common thing that people are like, but what should we do? And, and is, there, is there like some magic answer that this is what exactly you need to do with APIs and business models? Well, of course there isn't, but there is a very good set of research now, which wasn't around at the time uh, fully when we started writing the book. So right now, when we are looking at the most recent research, there's a lot of stuff. So this was what we came up uh, at the time we originally wrote the book. So there are a few things here, like looking at not just API as a product, because yes, well, API is a product, but it can be so much more. It can be actually a feature of your kind of a tangible physical product. It can be a productized service or part of a productized service. It can be just a kind of an additional um, feature of your digital or real world service. For example, uh, you know, tracking your parcel or something like that. It can be a customer specific service and it can be just an interface to reach your uh, IoT or data or, or cognitive resources in a platform, for example. And it can, of course, be an interface to a platform, so multi-sided, two-sided, something else. So uh, in the research, we're calling them boundary resources. And then, of course, it can be a part of an integration. So call, calling an API as a product, so API as a product, kind of this thesis, is correct in terms of treating APIs as a productized service or productized thing but it's also wrong in the sense of it directs us too much in the idea that API is a lone, standalone product always and cannot be anything else. And then there's, of course, this kind of API strategy misconception that uh, your strategic choices in your API strategy are just about who you provide APIs to. So kind of a positive thing and, and selecting from a multitude of segments, for example. But actually, it's a lot more about who you do not provide your APIs to. So actually, when you look at things, there are a lot of cases where a company is, is uh, thinking that, hey, we need to provide APIs. And they don't actually think about what are the capabilities of those possible potential consumers of those APIs. Can they actually consume an API 
per se, but about can they actually, should they actually consume a plugin uh, to reach the API or a device to reach the API or something else? So when you really truly think about an ecosystem, you think also about all the operators, all the participants in the ecosystem and see that, okay, where do you actually need to plug your API in? And this has been a case in, in a lot of companies who, who I'm, I have worked with and also uh, somewhat in the research lately covered that how this kind of a, I would call it even a plugin ecosystem or kind of a different kind of an API consumership, how that evolves. And here we see one example of a research which kind, kind of nicely summarizes this business model. So this is about IoT platform business models. And you can see a lot of different things. You can even see embedded device operation in the core capabilities there. And, and their whole idea of like embedding the features, embedding the APIs into some hardware um, or a software running in a hardware, for example, that's an interesting concept. Or, you know, providing selected third party devices and provider devices and adding your API there as, a, as an additional feature. There are a lot of things here that we can take up. Uh, there's also a lot of revenue models um, in the bottom part there. So per connected device, per API call, traffic based, all of the things that we actually see in a lot of different business models, not just IoT, they are very common API business models. But just to say that there are different kinds of areas based on the technology and, and based on the industry. I'll look at a little bit uh, further with more of them, but business model is not the same as revenue model. This is a common thing to, to kind of get wrong. So here's a business model canvas from an API cycles method. As I mentioned, I was developing it and it's a, an a open license method. You can just go to the URL there. And here's an example from a water services um, business model. I was working with the Finnish government and with the different water services providers in Finland. And we were trying to figure out what actually should be done by the water services providers themselves and what should be actually done with and by the ecosystem. So this was one area about water consumption API. And here you can see that the revenue streams are obviously one area of the business model while there can be a lot of other things. So then the next one, uh, if I got a penny of all the uh, postgraduate or like graduate thesis workers who come to me and, and they say they are researching API monetization, and they think that it's about money or like, you know, revenue. But actually, uh, Marco Seppan and one of our co-authors of API Economy 101 uh, and professor at the Tampere University has researched this quite a lot. And he just uh, delivered a great speak uh, uh, talk in API Days Helsinki in June about API monetization. But the main thing is that you have all the, those indirect values. So a lot of public sector, customers, for example, say that, no, we cannot use business models in our API strategy. It doesn't make sense because we are a public sector organization. But of course, it makes sense. You have a lot of indirect value uh, for public sector organizations coming from, from APIs, but also for, like, I was working in a SaaS company, and there uh, we got a lot of things like cost more customer engagement, uh, less churn, more market share growth, you know, cost reduction, all kinds of things uh, that are indirect. So even if you don't charge for your API, uh, then you can still make or save money with it or create value. So then there's a lot of blockchain business models and blockchain for some people's surprise is of course connected with APIs and there's a lot of possibilities for API business models here. Uh, I'm, I was interested to see this particular research because actually what they have done is they have put APIs just in the kind of top corner here, which is kind of making sense, but one could argue that there could be other, other purposes for APIs also. But there's again, a lot of similar things here and they even connect this to IoT than what we saw in the IoT um 
business models. So, and, and by the way, these research uh, articles are, are quite openly available and I would suggest that you really look at them because no point in, in reviewing something that somebody al already has found not working or working. So API business models, they are not only about APIs, obviously that was already established by the other speakers. So there are all these technologies from IoT, blockchain, AI, ML, virtual reality data, and, and all of this stuff that uh, is kind of connected and has its own logics to um, the business models. But then if we took, take a few other examples, so energy sector, there's a lot of data hubs being built in European Union area because of a directive from European Union. And this has really been like smart metering and everything P2P uh, and all these aggregators have really uh, kind of given a, a, a push to developing a lot of interesting business models in this area. And this research uh, summarizes 40, uh, the most interesting companies and their business models. It's, it's really a good read. And they are looking at the value proposition, targeted customers, value creation, value delivery, and value capture and revenue model there. And it's so interesting because in energy sector, there's even this kind of prosumers and consumers and, and all that decentralization, which then translates to a lot of production areas and, and for example, um, kind of printed goods and, and uh, a lot of other decentralized um, processes. So then the question is how to start your API program and how to really pick the business model. So in the API economy book, I basically outlined the basic steps. And the thing is that you really need to include, as we also say in the API cycles method, that you need to really have the whole village, the whole company and the business stakeholders, the tech people, their purchasers, sale, salespeople, everybody, uh, and get them into the same table. This is the common mistake that happens, that every time somebody says we failed or we don't know how to use, for example, the API cycles method, it's because they did not do this step, like do this seriously. And, and also don't create just an API program, create a business development program with an API focus and start with the strategic goals, but don't be afraid to change those strategic goals if they were kind of pre-API era goals. And map out the ecosystem journeys, customer and partner needs, and then start with really the customer needs first. Uh, then you will get to the right direction. So what tools to use? Well, you can use any business modeling canvases, but of course they might only cover the typical business model possibilities and kind of guide you there. So this is an example from a research about uh, mobility as a service. And there were all kinds of uh, great business models mapped from Budapest and Greater Manchester and Luxembourg, Luxembourg and their uh, open APIs and standardized APIs are one area. We did this uh, work in Finland in the Finnish travel sector where uh, there was a law, uh, which is not a European Union law, but a, a national law about travel chains and, and APIing the whole travel sector. And there uh, we kind of had to cover a lot of different uh, things about the business models of all these operators, uh, a real ecosystem story. But here then, uh, Marco Seppanen and, and a research group, again, uh, has made this platform ecosystem canvas, and we are actually uh, kind of formulating this platform model uh, with the Finnish travel data hub that is being built and we're doing the legal design on the government guidelines there. And it is really interesting because there are so many stakeholders and there is a free mirror and free and all kinds of other models in the same platform. And when you start, you need to map out what are you? Are you a resource provider or a resource consumer? And remember that there are all these resources that you can potentially API fi With the method, uh, there's a whole set of canvases and, and instructions for all the different um, stages of API development. Uh, I'll show one example here from the water services. So here was the whole ecosystem and journeys 
mapped out and then we kind of started to put put stuff in here like I so showed you already before so basically if you want to read more about this uh, I'm happy to help we organize workshops training consulting do all kinds of things around APIs you can visit the apiscycles.com and you can go to train yourself at Osango Academy or uh, suggest to a friend or a colleague and then there's some API scene blogs uh, so how to start an API program using API of cycles method it also includes a full video from API Days Helsinki where I go a little bit deeper into the method and you can get the book online so that's pretty much my stuff <laughs> yeah thank you very much uh, Mariuka thank you very much for uh, for this presentation uh, one question that sometimes uh, uh, occur um, about like the what are called sometimes interface business models because yeah. sometimes people call EBI API business models they mix the service mm -hmm. the capability and the interface directly yeah but, but some APIs are just like interface business models the fact that you just either aggregate or you just uh, deliver it in a nicer interface more support mm -hmm. more maintained right so how do you defer the value of the data and the value of the interface that delivers the data, yeah. for example. Well, we actually just discussed this because of, for example, that travel data hub, uh, it's an interesting case. So first of all, travel companies, Finnish travel companies are, are inputting their data there. And then there's a whole ecosystem of service providers and government officials who are basically, uh, uh, and tourism organizations who are enriching and improving that data in all kinds of ways. There are APIs to translate the stuff there, you know, manual work and all that. But then there are these channels, channel operators, like, you know, TripAdvisors and, and Googles and other things. And they obviously are supposed to use that data via APIs. Uh, and then they are providing the data <laughs> again to their customers, even with the APIs. So there's an issue with the kind of, when, when you deal with data, really like data, uh, instead of just the API. So there is the problem or thing that a data can be transferred separately and stored separately from the API. So you have all kinds of ownership issues, you have editing issues, you have like, uh, for example, one thing that is making our heads ache is that you have one set of um, licensing inside the data hub, but when you actually take it out and you publish it in a channel partner, uh, they might have their own conditions, but uh, and then the data ownership even changes when it breaches that channel. So data is a wild card in a way compared to apis api is is a much kind of more consistent thing on its own so you always have to deal with the data issue separately so the question is if api to uh, if the api is easier to use than a file for example for data does the api should be cheaper or more expensive because actually it's a better way to deliver the service. It is, it is. I mean, seriously, I have had to solve that problem too. <laughs> a long time ago, the first time, and, and we came to the conclusion that the API was going to be free for our like SaaS users, for example, because it just made so much sense. I mean, it reduced our cost of integration. So temporarily it resulted into cash flow loss basically, which was, you know, it sounded a bit stupid and it was a bit hard to sell to the management. But then uh, obviously when uh, things just got so much simpler uh, to do that integration, it was more customers that actually started integrating into the platform. And then there were even more customers coming in because we had the API and then they actually stayed longer. Uh, when they had built a lot of stuff, like some customers even built a whole new UI on top of <laughs> the whole API, which we found out a little bit later, <laughs> by the way, but <laughs> they really stuck. They didn't go away. <laughs> so yeah, I think it, it does make sense to offer the API more, more um, cheap or free than the file. Okay, so better service at lower price. Yeah, this is the API economy. Thank you very much, Mariuka.